on February 1st, 2017. With over 20,000 people playing the game every single day. Welcome to VR chat. If you were a chat like me, you would know You've the probably headed. seen a lot of these, trackers, Valve Index, but don't know what the game is about. Anything you could imagine someone has made. VR chat? That's not the worst idea. You stupid, stupid disco ball. <laughs> This is a guide, a full guide to VRChat, answering the most basic questions. I won't tell you the history of VRChat or how to make and upload avatars and worlds. Instead, I'll tell you where to go to find that information and how you can enjoy your time in game, imagining you've never played it before. It may seem weird to start with accounts, but the truth is a lot of players don't understand anything about it when they first play. You can play VRChat in a few different ways, through Steam, through the Quest Store, and even mobile for some devices. But let's ignore mobile. Signing in, you go through Steam, Meta, or an official account. But here's the thing. If you're not an official account, you get locked out of a lot of features outside of VRChat itself. But also, most importantly, your name will appear with a bunch of numbers behind it, so everybody around you knows you're an absolute pleb. So my suggestion is just make an account. There's so many games out there, it still amazes me when I see the sheer amount of people playing VRChat simultaneously. But okay, you downloaded it. How do you play? VR. It's in the name. Like, it is. It is in the name. This game is meant for VR, so you can play it in VR with any headset you can connect to Steam or the Meta Store. I won't get into the different headsets, but you also don't need a headset. The first 500 hours of playtime I had in this game was entirely in desktop, meaning I opened the game through Steam and played using basic WASD controls. But if you really want to play in VR and you want to know what headset you should buy, the market's constantly changing, so I don't know what it's going to be in the future. So you're going to have to do the research yourself. You know, it's hard to read a lot of these older tombstones, but like, this guy died in 1886. So you're in VR now, ready to set off for adventure like all of those amazing media you watched. You know, Player Ready 1, Sword Art Online. De um, I, can't rem I can't remember. This guy wouldn't know. But what can you even do? Getting into the game, you'll notice two things. Where you are and what you are. This entire game is created by the community and uploaded through Unity. So know that everything you can see in this entire video was made by just some guy or girl. Surprisingly, a lot of girls in this game, more than any other game I've ever played, in more ways than one. You'll first spawn in the default home world and walking over to the... Hold on. Did you get your settings right? I don't want to get too into the settings as it's a very personalized experience, but there are a few things you should be aware about if you're getting into the game in VR. First is your movement settings. Looking to the right of spawn, you'll notice an option to change the way you move around in VR. If you're experienced with being in VR, you can probably keep it as normal. Holding the joystick forward makes you move forward, but if you're inexperienced in VR, this can cause motion sickness, and it would be much better to teleport around the map. In games like Half-Life Alex, you can see this the best, as you point where you want to go, and you're We're there. We're going down the slide in virtual reality. Wee! Come on. Wee! VR chat can work in the same way, but in order to have other people see where you're going, your character will walk there first, then you will teleport inside that character at the location. There's also comfort turning, which depending on if it's on or off, will allow you to turn smoothly or snap into different directions. This can also help with motion sickness, as motion sickness caused by VR is usually due to the movement you're seeing, not matching up with what your body feels. Here's something huge, personal space. Make sure it's checked off. If it's checked on, every time somebody gets near you, they disappear. For those who need it, the menu works like this. You open the launch pad with your menu button. You'll then see quick links that will take you to full pages of whatever is listed like worlds you can visit and avatars you've saved. Social is your friends list, and groups are a way to connect to like-minded people. We'll go into all of those soon. The quick actions on the bottom are as follows. Go home will take you to whatever world you set as your home world. By default, it's what you see now. Respawn sends you to the spawn of the world you're in. The rest we can look at later. But the bottom part of the menu is the interesting part. You have notifications for when friends send you invites or people send you friend requests. The Here tab lets you look at the world you're in and the people currently in it. There's a Camera tab for the in-game camera and sound settings for the most important options around that. Then you'll have what I call the small menu settings. In this tab, you'll find all the settings you would most likely frequent, your UI, avatar, and display settings in the most basic sense. But here's a tip. You can access what I call the 
big menu settings by double clicking on that gear. And here, you can really delve into the settings you want. Experiment around with comfort settings and graphics to see what you like best. The rest of the settings are pretty straightforward outside of things like IK settings and tracking. That's a full body thing though. And I'll assume that if you have full body tracking, you probably know that things like arm versus height ratio and knee angle should be adjusted on a per avatar basis. Back on the launch pad, you'll notice these wings coming off each side. These can be customized as you like with a bunch of different menus, like a friends list and emojis to use. I personally have my friends list on one side and my avatars on the other, so I don't have to open the big menu to view them. And finally, on the bottom of the big menu, is a question mark that will take you to a page with a ton of guides for you. So if there's something you don't understand, you can learn more there. And if there's something you really don't know or can't find information about, post a comment and I'll answer for you. Avatars are basically what you play as, how people perceive you. Walking over to the mirror, you'll notice these pictures of characters. Each of those is an avatar that you can use to represent yourself in game. Just click on them, see what you like, and know that there's probably more options available by holding the menu button, or R on desktop. You'll get this radial menu that'll give you plenty of options, like a portable mirror that you can open anywhere, or a chat box that lets you talk to people without your mic. What you want to look at are the expressions, which typically, for newer avatars, will allow you to toggle certain features, like colors and clothing pieces. But you're not limited to the avatars in this starting world. Opening your menu and going to the avatar tab, you can see not only all kinds of public avatars available, but also avatar worlds that will contain a bunch of free avatars for you to try out. Just browse the list, see what catches your eye, and join. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you sure you want to do that? It's probably shit. We haven't gotten to worlds yet, but I'll tell you the most popular avatar worlds, the ones with people in them, aren't always the good ones. They're typically the most recently released ones. So where do you find the good avatar worlds? Some other video. Not here, sorry. But I will say, I personally like the legacy avatar creators, other avatars. They're cute. You can find these worlds by clicking on an avatar that looks cool, clicking on the avatar creator, and scrolling down to see their uploaded worlds. They'll probably have an avatar world that has all kinds of cool <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'm a lemon. <laughs> I'm a lemon. But what if you want something more? Something more customizable, personal, and potentially naughty. You need to go outside of VRChat for that. I'll cover literally everything about the avatar market in a soon to come video where I interview a bunch of avatar creators about everything I could think of. I won't tell you how to make an avatar or edit an existing avatar. Instead, let's buy and upload one together. Hello and welcome to my guide for buying avatars. Today, we're gonna buy an avatar. There's a lot of different sites that sell avatars, but today I'll just show you one, Jinxie. Jinxie wants to be the hub of all things creative in VRChat, and so you'll find most things you can think of on it. A lot of these listings as well aren't hosted by Jinxie, so clicking on them will send you to another site to view the avatar. Today I'll be looking at this one. When buying an avatar, there's a few things you should look out for so as not to be taken by surprise when seeing the avatar in-game. Make sure there's a ton of in-game photos. Don't trust Blender renders. Anybody can make an avatar look good in Blender. Make sure they include in-game video footage as well, like a toggle showcase. MMD videos where they're dancing aren't the best, and highly edited showcase videos are a bit iffy too, as it's hard to really see the avatar in a way that you would use it in-game. Then is the performance. If they don't list the specs of the avatar, don't buy it. And if they list it and it's garbage, also don't buy it. Obviously this is up to you, but we shouldn't be supporting creators who refuse to optimize their avatars. Also be aware of what purpose you're buying the avatar for. If you're a Quest user, you need to be buying a Quest avatar. I'm not, and none of my friends use Quest, so I'm not bothered by that. Getting the avatar, you should be able to download a zip file with everything you need. With this, make sure you read the directions the avatar creator gives with the avatar. This could be located in the zip file as a text document or on the page you bought the avatar from. In this case, it's on the store page. Then make sure you have all the files you need for the avatar. Here, it lists all the shaders are included in the zip, so that's good. They might not be though. If you're told you need a specific Poyomi shader you don't have, you'll have to join the Poyomi Discord to find the download. VRC Fury is another thing a lot of avatars need, especially with SPS nowadays. SPS being what's used for um, like that stuff. You can find that at the VRC Fury website and following their steps to install. But before all that, you need Unity and the Creator Companion. On the VRChat website, you can find the Creator Companion and you can find all the different versions of Unity on the Unity website. Make sure you're using the right version of Unity for the avatar you bought. VRChat used to use a 2019 version and now they use a 2022 version. So double check what version, install Unity, launch the Creator Companion and open a new avatar project. In Unity, there's only a few things you need to pay attention to. The control panel is how you will upload the avatar and the explorer on the bottom is where you'll find the scene you need to open after importing everything. Drag everything into Unity in the order the avatar creator tells you. The VR 
VRChat SDK should already be in if you launch through the Creator Companion, VRC Fury would be next, then whatever shaders they include. Lastly is the avatar itself. After everything is in, open the scene typically labeled Open Me, and your avatar should show up. If there's any problems that happen while importing the avatar, contact the avatar creator through their Discord. It should be linked on their store page or the receipt page after purchase. And if there isn't one, I can't help you, buddy. They're a shit creator who doesn't want customers to contact them. Next is uploading. Everything to do with that can be done on the VRChat SDK control panel. If it isn't already open, you can open it on the top of the screen under VRChat SDK. Moving over to the Builder tab, you can select what avatar you're uploading. For me, it's just this one. Name it, describe it, and select what content warnings you want. This isn't super necessary for most avatars. Thumbnail is what people will see in game when clicking on you. I like to choose VRChat pictures I took in game, but you can use whatever. You might come across a couple errors that allow you to auto fix. If you're not sure about those, once again, ask the creator you bought it from. Most are happy to help. I tend to click auto fix anyways though, so maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Lastly, on the bottom of your control panel, you can upload. It'll take a while to compile everything, but once it's done, you can see and use it in game. We have it, we're in. And it works. That's that. Here's a tip. On the VRChat website, you can log in and view everything you've ever uploaded. When selecting an avatar, you can see on the bottom if it's PC or Quest. And there's another thing called imposter. Imposter means people in game who typically would see a fallback avatar because your avatar is unoptimized to shit, would instead see the imposter, which is a low poly optimized version of the avatar that you're wearing. They're cool, you should probably do that. So now you have an avatar you can represent yourself with. Great, you can go into public lobbies and make new friends to play with. How do you do it? Look at your menu again and you can browse all the wonderful virtual pits you'll sink your hours into. Pay particular attention to the popular, trending, and new and trending tabs because that's where you'll spend most of your time. Choose a world and head on over to die, most likely, because you need safety settings. A lot of these avatars are, they're gonna tank your frames down to nothing. Unless you're on a quest where you can't see half the avatars anyway, your computer will not be happy joining a random public lobby with no safety on. It's like sex, you don't go in raw. This game is, like I said, made entirely by the community, which means avatars in particular are unoptimized pieces of shit for the most part. 166 megabytes? You see those names above their heads? You can adjust how you see these names in the radial menu by holding your menu button, by the way. And also on desktop, when you press escape to open your menu, you can then hold shift and you can click on people. There will be a color above their name showing how optimized their avatar is. Does it mean anything for you? For the most part, no. But red means it could be killing your frames. Green means they're using a more optimized avatar, typically because they either just started playing the game and are using the default avatars I showed you before, or they're at an event that requires them. It ranges from excellent to very poor. See, on avatars, I want you to think of it as though there are several different layers, like an onion. And each of these toggles will allow you to turn on and off those layers. It used to be, and still is, that people could use those layers, shaders, particles, to crash your game and make your life miserable. So keeping them off typically and individually turning on people you want to see as you interact with them is recommended. And I mean off for everyone, except friends. The only things I have allowed for people is I can see their name, I can hear them, and then I can see the avatars of trusted users and known users. Another thing you should definitely check is in the small menu settings called avatar culling. This makes it so you only load avatars that are close by and only a certain number of them. When messing with it, you should see a circle. Anything outside of that circle will not load. I keep mine at 15 meters and 20 avatars respectively. Looking at the safety settings, you've probably noticed the different ranks that exist within VRChat. Visitor, new user, user, known user, and trusted user. There are other ranks that exist, nuisance being the one you'll see in public lobbies sometimes, and legendary and veteran rank being something that doesn't exist anymore, but people who had it back in the day will never let it die, typically writing it in their bios and thinking they're better than everyone else. They're not, don't worry. Nuisance you get by being a dick, an asshole, making the game miserable and getting reported a lot. Once you get it, that account is toast. I'm pretty sure you can't get out of being nuisance rank. The other ranks you get just by playing. Typically, you'll end up trusted at about 500 to 1000 hours. Less if you upload content and make a lot of friends. It's not a well understood system, but with being able to upload content at new user, which you get very quickly, rank shouldn't matter to you much. Personality matters more. And if you're having trouble finding friends in this game, I did make a video back in the day about that. You know, sometimes I like to think that maybe in graveyards. All these gravestones are, are just like where the ghosts are. They're just sitting on their graves, looking at us as we go by. Like all these guys are sitting there looking at me, talk to myself in front of a camera and laughing that I'm such a fucking idiot. They all died in World War I. Private, sergeant, private, private, private. All different classes. Really seems like every game that you play 
there's some sort of class divide between the players. Trusted users. I remember being a new user, scared of the trusted ones. But in reality, no trusted user gives a shit about rank anymore. All the purple name means is that they have less of a life than you. That's it. Some of the most fun and interactive VR worlds are the game world. It's where you can go with your friends to have fun and where you'll probably spend most of your time when you first get in the game. But which ones are fun and which ones are garbage? I'm gonna use some deducing skills right now. Okay, so I think the mm... <laughs> Finding good game worlds can be done in one of three ways. One, have a game world you already like, a well-made game that works well. Open up the map in your menu and click on the world author at the top under the map name. Scroll down and you'll see all the other maps they made. They should be of a quality somewhat similar to what the one you just played. Number two, people. Find trusted users and click on them. Scroll down and you might get lucky seeing a playlist of worlds curated by them over the years. Number three, internet. Look it up, buddy. Some TikTok users probably have a whole series on good VR chat worlds. And this applies to every type of world. Game worlds, chill worlds, whatever worlds. The most fun part of the game for so many people is looking through worlds and exploring. So I don't want to ruin that for you by showing where and what to do. The experience and the process of finding the gem is worth just as much as the gem itself. Just keep in mind, if you like a map, look at the guy who made the world and they probably made other good maps similar to it. Remember that radio wheel from when you used animations earlier? On the left side is a tools option, which allows you to open a portable mirror and a camera at any moment. And this camera is a tool you should use a lot. It's usable in desktop too. Hold middle click to move the camera and hold right click to move yourself. You can also open the camera tab in the menu and you'll have the option of a stream camera. What this does is it changes the view of VRChat on your desktop to be what the camera sees. So using a program like OBS, Capturing the VR chat window, you can get the camera view. Everything else is pretty intuitive, so experiment with it. We got mask, we can turn the environment off. There we go, wow, so many abilities on the camera. 4K resolution, filters with glitch. Whoa, crazy, dude, we're doing so much. If you play the game for years, these memories will be important. You've probably noticed the groups part of the menu. Groups are what people who want to gather a community of like-minded people, event organizers, and those who want funny words above their heads make to achieve their goals. When you join a group, you gain two abilities. One, you can represent it and have the banner show above your name. And two, if there's a world instance created by the group, you can go to it. Groups can only be made by people with VRChat Plus. I've played the game since 2017 and I've never had VRChat Plus. So that's why I also don't have a group for my viewers to join. Should we change that? All right, vrchat.com. We got uh, two subscriptions. Oh, do you have you have to do it in VRChat? Yeah, you do. The process of getting VRChat Plus is by clicking on the tab at the bottom of the big menu and opening a link to the Steam page. VRChat Plus is purchased through Steam and then affects your account. Once you have VRChat Plus, everything can be done so much easier through the website. Their Derek core has been made. And with this, I now have a group of my own. So you, dear viewer, should join my group. An invite link will be in the description. Of course, making a group isn't the only thing you can do with VRChat Plus. For the steep price of $9.99 a month or $99.99 a year, you gain the abilities to do a lot of things. Customize your UI, background, and color themes. Upload a custom profile photo, an icon, and even game custom emojis you can shoot out at people. But if you're going to ask me if it's worth it, maybe. I don't know. Considering I spend more than $9.99 on avatars to customize my appearance in game, it's probably about right. Because I gotta be honest, being able to customize my UI is, is so nice. When it comes to events, there's all types. I plan on making an in-depth video on this topic in the future, but for now, I'll cover the types there are and how you can attend them. The first is community and games events. You can see these happening after joining various event groups. They typically happen once or twice a week. As for what groups to join, I've seen plenty of posters being advertised in worlds like Drinking Night, The Pug, Black Cat, and more. Join them and try. It can't hurt to try. There's also a whole list of events tracked on VREventHub.com, which is also worth a visit. Other events are more private. Bonkers. Clubs. There's two types of clubs, music clubs and dance clubs. 
Music clubs include places like Shelter and Sanctum, places that have a DJ playing with a world dedicated to the experience. There's others and some only happen once in a while, but do your own research on these. I haven't been to them. I have been to Shelter before. I'll leave a link to their website in the description, but Shelter, like most other events, the easiest and pretty much only way to keep up to date is to join their Discord. In the Discord, they'll have the method of joining listed out, which last I checked was through the group, which a lot of events are choosing to do nowadays. But dance events are different. More personal, more secretive, more rules. Dance events are usually called club something. These clubs require you to go to their Discord, be age verified, then add a specific account that will only log in during events. Then you'll have to request off that account to join the event. Every club is different though, so check their Discord, be of age, and follow their rules. For almost all events, you need to be in a green avatar. Remember that? An optimized avatar that won't make people lag because at events, showing people's avatars makes a much better experience. And with over 100 people sometimes, you can't be having poor avies there. Think of the poor photographer. It's degenerate, really. I mean, what would these guys think? I don't think they'd think much. Everywhere people go, they live for a few basic needs. Food, shelter and entertainment. And with our monkey brains, well, two mountains in a valley for most of us is enough to get in a wooga. So as soon as we get the power of creation where we can do whatever we want, we immediately create the same places that the fucking slum dog bet spend their hard earned money to watch women dance for them. Except in VR, it's not always women and it's not always men. VR check. Why can you open the Steam page and see people with 7k, 8k, 10k hours writing positive reviews for it? I don't have that many hours, I swear. There's a few reasons. The number one reason is sleeping in VR. A lot of people prefer sleeping in VR over sleeping normally. The reasons are various, but I made a video on it before, so I won't delve too into it. Another reason people have a lot of hours is they tend to sit in desktop a lot. This one, I fall under. There are a lot of times I'll basically use VR chat as a voice chat, opening it, going up to friends, and talking to them through VR chat instead of anything else. The third one is just playing the game a lot for a long time. The game's been public since 2017, about 2,500 days ago as of recording this segment. So if you play four hours a day every day, you get 10K hours, or more likely, about 28 hours a week. Totally doable. There's a lot to do in this game, and people almost make a second life on it because of how socially dependent they become. It's a whole world out there. 